No problem. <laughs> Good thing you're tall, huh? Yeah. Yeah, if you're good, you're ready. Give you that, and we'll make a quick change here, old fan. And maybe we can move off to the side so we can get all these folks in the background. Should. Just want to make sure you get it close, that's all. I'm accustomed to speaking with marching bands playing. Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, I saw your uh, uh, Barack Obama Facebook thing yeah, came out that. yesterday. Yeah, uh, this is looking a little this way, but it was well, <laughs> it was well written. <laughs> uh, let's see here. You want me to look at you or at the camera? I'm out. Am I looking at you? Yeah. Okay. Can you talk aloud just for me? I want to make sure. I'm here with Gary Kilmer. He's with Kilmer. Thanks so much for taking the time out, checking audio here. I'm sure you can us. Check one, two. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm welcome to Congressman Derek Kilmer. Okay. You got it? We we're here at the Buckland Hill Bridge ribbon cutting ceremony. Congressman Kilmer, thanks so much for being with us today. Um, what does the opening of this type of bridge mean to you? Well, I, you know, this is a terrific project, and it's a it's a project that's based on partnership, uh, the the county, the state through the Transportation Improvement Board, the Federal Highway Administration all have their oars in the water on this project. And what this project will enable is improved safety, improved mobility. Uh, it's good for salmon uh, in terms of uh, uh, providing uh, better fish passage. So it's really a win-win-win, and uh, I think it's a great day. Well, it, it, was, it took a long time to get here, and it was a tough project uh, for the locals, but um, it's great that this is now done. Well, it certainly did, and thank you very much again for coming out and joining us today. Uh, you bet. I wouldn't miss it. Thank you. Cool. Check, one, two. Check, check, one, two. Check, check one, two. Can we get started, please? Yes. I'm Ed Wolf, Central Kitsap Commissioner. Uh, what an exciting time to be a commissioner from the Central Kitsap. Let me start out by saying I've, I've asked everyone to give two minutes only, so you're not going to hear a lot of speeches. I'm going to try to cut mine less than that. But I got up this morning at 4 o'clock and looked out the window, and it was pouring down and, and the lightning, and I looked at my wife and I said, hey, it's our Northwest. We live here. This is what we do. Hey. 
So on behalf of uh, the county and certainly the other two commissioners, Rob Gelder and Charlotte Garrido, the county thanks you for being here today to celebrate with us. We celebrate this ribbon cutting and the opening of a very, very complex infrastructure project for Silverdale. It's been in the making for decades, way before me. In the decades, it's been working and working and working, but it's here today. It's gonna to bring improvement to the economic and the ecological vitality of Silverdale and Dyes Inlet. Now, this is a point I've been waiting to, to, to get across to everyone here today. This is like I'm looking out Americana. This is Life Magazine. This is, this is unbelievable. The project was an inconvenience to county residents. It was an inconvenience to businesses, of course. It was a tremendous inconvenience to Krista Shore residents. Yeah. So, thank everyone that I've just mentioned, but I want to just talk very, very briefly about Krista Shores. You'll get your chance to clap, Krista Shores. So we have, we have today, walking across this bridge, we started out with five Krista Shore residents months ago, then became 40. Now we've got 100 Krista Shore residents walking across today. Yeah. Wheelchairs, walkers, we're going to be there with you in a few minutes. Um, Ruth Hurd, I met earlier today. Where is Ruth? Ruth Hurd, Krista Shores, is 104 years old out here today. When I said, Ruth, thanks for being here, she said, hey, I'm just a South Dakota farm girl. That's gonna... But she's here. So what you're seeing, I'm not going to talk about the project today. Uh, Tina Nelson's going to talk about it, and Andy Nelson, our, our public works director, what a great team. Tina's a project manager extraordinaire. It's a $20 million, pro I'm sorry, yeah, $20 million project. You'll get the details from Tina. Uh, but I do want to point out, it's the largest transportation project in the history of the county public works department. The largest project in the history of the county. Our staff has been so professional and we've had the worst winter ever, I think the wettest winter ever. Twelve, last couple months they've been working 12 hour days and I have to say it's on time and within our budget expectations. Let's hear it for that, okay? So before I, we have a list of speakers today and they're sitting in the front row and we're looking forward to them for sure. But before I do that, I'd like to present the colors by the U.S. Marine Color Guard. It's actually the Marine Corps Security Force Battalion Color Guard from Bangor with a couple of Navy guys in there, too, yeah. I understand. Uh, so, if we may, let's present the colors. And after that, we'll have the CK High School Marching Band. Please. I'm supposed to say, Prince, present the colors. Go ahead. March. March time. March. Oh, oh, oh. 
We're not talking to national, we're not talking state, we're talking about our Kitsap County and how good it feels to live here, what we see today. So we have a list of speakers today. I've asked everyone to try and keep it to two minutes. Uh, Congressman Kilmer, you can double that if you like, because you, you said, would you come up and join us, please? Hello, Kitsap County. Can we give it up for Ed Wolf, the commissioner here? I am really happy to be here. I am happy uh, about this project. I am happy to uh, not be in Washington, D.C., where it is 95 degrees and 90% humidity. I will take this. This is good weather. Um, listen, I'm energized by days like today. This, uh, this project, uh, first of all, put people to work. And we should uh, give a round of applause to all the men and women who work to make this project a reality. I'm also energized because this project represents a partnership between the county and the state through its Transportation Improvement Board and the Federal Highway Administration. Uh, the federal government, through all of you and your uh, taxpayer dollars, put in $6.8 million into this project because it makes economic sense and because it makes ecological sense. Um, I have two little kids. I've got a, a six-year-old named Tess and a ten-year-old named Sophie, so I often like to think of things through their eyes. Um, and as I thought about this project, I kept thinking of, um, of Sesame Street. This project is brought to you by the letter S. Um, there are five S's that come to mind on this project, and, um, and one of them is not Silverdale, because that's too easy. Um, but the first one is safety. This is a project that will make sure that this road is safer for drivers and for pedestrians and for bicyclists. And particularly as we see hospitals and neighborhoods grow in this area, that's really important in ensuring safety for everybody. Second S, salmon. You know, we are putting a lot of effort into trying to recover Puget Sound and recover our salmon runs, and this project is part of that. Many of us were visiting with the Suquamish tribe and Chairman Forsman's here today to celebrate a project that they undertook, and this project is, again, part of that effort to recover our salmon. Third S, service. During this project, people had to change their routes and change their lives. God knows the Krista Shores residents uh, saw some disruption. But now you're going to see faster and easier service when we drive on this stretch of road. And I want to congratulate all three of the county commissioners for making this project a priority. Fourth S is sustainable. Helping Silver Silverdale grow in a way that's sustainable for its citizens and for its environment. And the fifth S, um, I thought about um, just as I drove up here, the fifth S is um, spicy. Um, because um, just down the road is my favorite uh, teriyaki and Vietnamese noodle soup place. Um, it's delicious, and uh, frankly, having delicious spicy uh, pho um, is really critical to my happiness and well-being. So, um, so listen, uh, I want to just congratulate the community for the completion of what is a really terrific project, and I want to invite uh, your continued partnership. Count me as a partner. All right, thanks, everybody. Thank you, Congress Congressman Kilder. Commissioner Rob Gelder, please. Thank you, Commissioner Wolf, and thank you all for being here. Um, this is just a phenomenal, I, I wish you all could stand here where mm -hmm. I am right now because the view is phenomenal. And I know you have a really good view this way as well, but to have this project come to fruition after all these years, to see the community come out, it's, it's a wonderful day to behold. And I didn't uh, collaborate with the congressman at all about the whole alliterative uh, letter thing, but I did have some, uh, which Commissioner Wolf already talked about, and that was the economy and the ecology of this project. 
which is huge to uh, Silverdale as a regional center. Uh, the, our ability to move people, goods, and services around our community is extremely important, and the ability to take out this choke point in our infrastructure is extremely important. But also, it's nice to be able to have a project that marries that economy with the ecology of it, and being able to open up and remove those 72-inch culverts uh, from the estuary and allow the, a better tidal flow is just the right thing to do on so many different levels. But I also want to switch from the E's to the P's and basically talk about thank you so much for your patience because this definitely had its impacts over the past 12 months. It's been huge and we appreciate your staying with it and your P, the other P, perseverance. Uh, because that's so important to make sure that while it is con inconvenient that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and this is the light that we see behind us and it's going to make such a big um, big impact but the last P I want to share with you is professionalism and I want to thank wholeheartedly our public works staff for undertaking the largest project in such a way that basically they were on top of it they did the best I've ever witnessed in terms of that communication and connection with the community about making sure that everybody was up to speed on what was happening. And so thank you so much for being here, being part of this momentous day, and uh, let's all enjoy this. So thanks so much. The millennials won't get this, but if there was a Life magazine today, this would be the cover of Life magazine. Yeah. For Mr. Charlie Garrido. Oh, there you go. Good morning. What a wonderful day for Silverdale. Actually, for all of Kitsap County. Thank you for being here, and I'm not going to cover the alphabet because I think it's been covered. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. But I was also going to talk about the ecology and the economy. Today, what we, the work that we have been suffering through for the last year has been worth it. We look around, I walked down on, on this side and I looked over the bridge here. It really is worth it. Not just for walkers, bicyclists, and cars, but this project helps restore spawning habitat for salmon and other Clear Creek estuary and floodplain flora and fauna. These natural features are important to our native culture and to the history of Kitsap County, right here in Silverdale. Now, the folks in, from Krista Shores have been mentioned a few times, and I had the opportunity to chat with a couple of them. I know that they have been watching this project from start till now, very, very carefully. And I'm interested to hear in the, even more of their stories that they have observed as we went along. But I also look forward to, to watching, and I know they do, to walking, watching the changes that continue to happen as nature reclaims this estuary. And the future monitoring that we and community volunteers will be doing into the future for, to help us observe the changes that we're seeing and understand how to do that further in, the other, in other areas as well. And we will see changes well beyond this estuary that are impacted by what's happening here. Our cherished Puget Sound will also benefit from the rhythms of nature that have been reintroduced and able to ebb and flow freely. From the estuary exchanging fresh and salt water and providing habitat that can again support the healthy functions of Dyes Inlet and therefore Puget Sound. Many of us have seen the fantastic changes that occurred on the Elwha River when the dam re was removed. Isn't this our own much smaller version of the Elwha removal? These are the positive impacts of finding better ways for us to coexist with the natural environment. So I also want to give kudos to our staff. They were exceptional in this, throughout this whole project. But I want to thank our project partners, our funders, local businesses, and all residents for your patience during this project. We truly value you and your contributions to our community and our quality of life. So let's celebrate the wonder of this day. 
for our diverse community, for our quality, quality of life, and for the promising benefits this project brings to our natural setting, setting that we are so lucky to live here in Kitsap County. Thank you. Last time I saw Lynn, Chairman Forsman was in a canoe, water trails festival, pouring down rain, lightning thundering. So nice to see you dry today, Chairman. Come up, please. <laughs> Leonard Forsman, Chairman of the Suquamish. Thank you, Commissioner Wolf. Thank you, everybody, for coming out to celebrate this um, event. I'd like to thank law enforcement, firefighters, military uh, for being here as well and all the workers and all the people who have been mentioned before. Um, we'd like to uh, kind of center on the salmon and this estuary and the ecology of this place. Uh, it's a very important place in the history and culture and heritage of the Suquamish tribe. Uh, there was a village just beyond here um, that was very well known and the people took the name of this uh, place to be the name of them of themselves. and. Uh, they had a trail, the Anderson Hill Road is actually the trail that went overland to Hood Canal to harvest over there. So they were working um, both estuaries and uh, were very, had a very robust life that depended upon the salmon uh, that ran in, this, in, the, in, in uh, the Clear Creek here. And um, one thing that in our belief system, the salmon are people, the salmon people. Um, they, they come in, they swim upstream, they spawn, they swim out, and then they go back out into the ocean and they turn back into people. And they watch us and how we respect them. And, you know, in the past here, we haven't been the best uh, host here on, the, on this river, so I think that it's affected them. But I don't think anything was intentional, but as time's gone on, we've learned more about our, the way we live. And this is an example of how we've learned. And uh, we're, today we're respecting those salmon people, and we hope that they'll uh, see that. and. Uh, and come back in greater numbers and uh, not only feed the ecosystem but feed uh, everybody else here and all the other animals that depend on them. So on behalf of the Suquamish tribe, I'd like to thank everybody who worked on this project and um, really are happy that uh, we'll be able to restore um, uh, this watershed into uh, what it was when uh, we first came here. Thank you. And they're all keeping it to two minutes. Can you believe that? Uh, myself included. Let me now introduce Kathleen Davis with the Department of State Department of Transportation. Hi, Kathleen. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, what a delight. Um, I'm representing both the Washington State Department of Transportation and the Federal Highway Administration. We support local communities across the state in managing the federal funds. And not only does this project remove a bottleneck, improve safety, but actually restores a functioning estuary. And so this is a huge win for the environment. I really applaud Tina Nelson and her crew. Um, it really does take, I'll add another uh, alphabet, P for partnerships. Um, all the funders, all the environmental agencies, I really appreciate the county's early coordination in working with all the partners uh, to get this project to where we are today. And I might add that our big uh, initiative within the department is practical solutions. How more practical can you, can you be than to give a contractor the ability to change the design and open the project w early, I think, yep. within the budget because of the schedule. Instead of a two-year construction, a one-year construction. That's innovation, and I applaud the county and congratulate you. Project manager, engineer extraordinaire, Tina Nelson. Hi, Tina. Well, for me, this is quite the day. It's done. It's done. And I do have a couple of gray hairs. Tex Lewis, some of you may know who he is. When we started the project, Tex Lewis said, you'll have some gray hair when it's over. And he said, nah, uh -uh, no big deal. Do I have more than two minutes? Yes. <laughs> 
we did a lot of coordination and a lot of planning, but I guess one thing that didn't get planned, and that was what I was speaking about, Commissioner Wolf said that I was going to talk about details on the project. Well, the details are around you. You can see them, the signals, the, the uh, outlook areas, the concrete bridge, the length of the bridge, the railings. What you can't see is what's in the ground, and that's a good thing. That's buried, and that was the biggest challenge we had on this job. If you want to see details, go to the website. Or ask me for a special tour or a special presentation, I'll do that. But I'm not going to tell you how much concrete and how many rebars and how many catch bases and how many linear foot of pipe that we put in. No. I want to use this as an opportunity, too, to uh, express my appreciation. You develop friendships when you do a job like this. And I appreciate all the trust and the support from so many that have been put in me. Somebody's got to kind of pull things together, and I knew that that was my role, and I have enjoyed every minute of it for the most part. <laughs> a project like this does not happen overnight. Like so many of you know, and of course the Krista Shores residents have experienced that, at least it takes a year. For the last six years, I have addressed something associated with this project just about every single day. And I still don't know all the details, nor do I understand them all. But it takes a team to do this. It takes a team to make this happen, and a team I had. It's been a ride with challenges, compromises, decisions, surprises, and success. A few smiles, a little bit of fun. It's my pleasure and the reason we stand here today to have worked with so many people, excellent individuals, bringing their expertise, experience, hard work and dedication to get it done. Staff at Kitsap County, what a team. We do know how to serve. The right-of-way team that negotiated with the property owners and worked with the Parks District. Our outreach staff creative pu that created publications, spreading information. And the day that we closed the road, we had three phone calls. 20,000 cars used to cross the estuary. We had three phone calls the day we closed the road. Inspectors and surveyors that have been on site many times, 10 to 12 hours a day, six days a week. Staff from our traffic, maintenance, storm, and sewer divisions, they reviewed the plans, they showed up to assist, they lent their expertise, and they assured that things were done right. Because after we are done here, they are going to have to maintain everything that was installed. And then to all of those on my team that have filled in and taken on different roles to help out, to fill in. When we put more inspectors on this project, other individuals had to do other things. It's been a great team building. And for those that have filled in where I have dropped the ball, this project was my highest priority. And all had one identical goal, provide the best project for the public. You develop relationships, like I said earlier. Our design consultant and their team, six years of working together. A professional friendship forever. Our construction management consultant, they've been on site from day one, actually, even before we went out to add. It's relationships that get to know, that gets it done. You get to know each other, you work together, you use each other's strengths. That email on a Sunday afternoon about something on the project doesn't always seem that bad when it also includes, so how was the birthday party? Or did you enjoy the concert? Utilities, public and private, big impacts. Lots of coordination before and during construction. Without your cooperation and dedication, we would not be here today. Our contractor, 
issue after issue, day after day, frustrating at times, but we're here and we are very pleased to have worked with you. We know better now, this was not a bridge project. It was a utility replacement project with a bridge. Some of you will totally understand what I'm saying. We started this as a bridge project, but as we were heading up the road, especially with the water main, we found, oh, things that you would not guess. <laughs> the public, and especially some of the businesses that are put up with the closure, and the amazing support provided by various organizations, and I have to mention three specifically. The Central Kitsap Community Council, Visit Kitsap, and the Clear Creek Task Force, all active participants from day one. The dedication of the individuals serving those organizations and their willingness to, to be involved on the project provide input and then some friendly words at times. So appreciated. Yes, we are all doing our jobs. This is my job and I so much enjoy the opportunity to get to do these things. This will be here for maybe not forever, but in my entire lifetime. The support of these three organizations has been amazing. The idea of closing the road, we weren't going to do that initially. We vetted it with the Central Kissup Community Council and the Clear Creek Task Force, and they said yes. We presented it to them and said yes. If Public Works thinks it's a good idea, then we're all on. They supported that. They brought that message to the public, and we appreciate that. The day I had to break the bad news, so we had to delay the project for a year. Construction was supposed to start in 2014. We ran into a few little hiccups with a variety of things, and we had to move the project along. The first one I vetted it with was with Mary Earl, with the kids up with the Central, with the Clear Creek Task Force. She said, oh, not a problem. It's actually great. Now we can monitor for a whole year. I'm all excited. That was all I needed to hear. It didn't feel so bad. We have forever changed the waterfront look for the people that shop here, live here, make their trip to the doctor. I am very proud of what we, the team, have accomplished and are leaving for the community to use. Thank you to everyone on the Buckley Hill project team. It's my sincere pleasure to have worked with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. That concludes the uh, formal presentations. At this point, we're going to um, cut the ribbon. And I'm going to ask the uh, our, uh, visiting speakers and dignitaries to join us up here. We have four very special people from Krista Shores that will be coming up and helping us cut the ribbon. This will take a three or four, two or three minutes probably to get everyone lined up for the ribbon cutting and, and for uh, photos. After that, immediately after that, Anyone that wants to walk across the bridge, let's do it. Let's do it. So give us a couple minutes to get everyone lined up here. We'll get some photos, and then we'll walk the bridge. Thank you. Can I slide in your spot? Here? Thank you.
right? <laughs> We are rolling now, whenever you're ready. Just uh, if you can give me a mic check there real check quick. Check on one, two. Check one, two. A little closer. Check one, two. There we go. Okay. Well, that was a great ceremony, Commissioner, and I know that uh, this project's been very near and dear to your heart. How do you feel now that the bridge is open? Actually emotional in that uh, when we started out, we were going to have about five Krista Shore residents who really experienced the run of all of this, and then it became 30, and today we had 100 Krista Shore residents 25 with walkers, 25 with wheelchairs. I walked a woman who was 103 years old Aww. on the bridge. So I'm feeling pretty good. This is good for the county and good for us. When I thought it was a real um, sense of community, and, and you know, as you said in your remarks, there's a, it took a cooperative nature of a lot of people yeah, who were yeah, inconvenienced yeah, by yeah. this project uh, to see them come together to help celebrate the opening is great joy. They did, and, and as I said, Tina Nelson deserves a lion's share of the credit as the leader of the project. But I, I, I said today, and I, I'll say it again, the millennials wouldn't understand what a Life magazine is, but many of the Crystal Shore residents and others out here understood Life magazine. This was a Life magazine front page photo. It was Americana, and it was Norman Rockwell all the way, and I gotta tell you, I feel like a million dollars. Well, thank you yeah. for being with us today. Thank you. This should go now. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Hi. <laughs> okay. Okay. You rolling? We're rolling, yep. Uh, just make sure we hold it a little closer and then we'll okay. be all good. So. Okay. Uh, with me now is Tina Nelson. She's the project manager for this project. Tina, I know that this has been six, maybe almost seven years of time put into this project. How do you feel today with the opening of the bridge? Oh, I feel like you finished your uh, degree in college <laughs> and you are done, done. But I also feel we, we really accomplished something. It, it's a big accomplishment and I'm proud of what we accomplished and it was so wonderful to see so many people here and have such a celebration for something that's done in public works. Well, and I noticed too that it seemed uh, one of the common themes in the speakers today. This truly was a community project and involved a lot of different moving pieces in the community. Uh, talk a little bit about how that all came together. Yeah, a lot of the moving things in the community, of course the impact to the public, but I think we've covered that. The other thing is that there are so many partners. There are so many other interests in the roadway with the various utilities and they needed to move, they needed to be replaced, they needed to be temporary located somewhere. That coordination is amazing. You know, we have everything in here. There's no gas across the bridge, but there's water, there's sewer, there's storm sewer, there is uh, electrical, there's electrical, which would be power. And then we have all the cables and everything else. So all of that coordination and everybody has their interest and we got to figure out everybody's schedules to get things done and coordinated. Well, so. congratulations. It's a wonderful project. and. Um I think the, the community is going to really appreciate the value over the years. Yeah, come down and see and stand on the sidewalk on the bridge and enjoy that estuary. Come watch the kiosk when it's done and post some information on it. Great. Well, yeah. thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Uh, for the inside report from the Buckland Hill ribbon cutting ceremony, this is Doug Bear back to the studio. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.
<laughs> no problem. Oh, go for it. Yeah, Tina. Hey, when can we drive on it? Yeah. Later today. Uh, I, would, I, I am not setting a time. I'm not sure how long it takes us. We got to get there. Yeah, well, he does now. We have to get all the chairs and everything else off first, and then the contractor needs to do a lot of <laughs> That's a Facebook profile picture. Uh, Is that a good one? Yeah, that'd be a big. <laughs> How are you folks doing today? Good. Staying dry, right?
Me, yeah, yeah. Anytime. See you guys later.